Hey everybody, I'm Shane. I'm Lex from Admin Arsenal. Welcome back. And uh, take two. <laughs> round, round two. <laughs> round two. <laughs> we're not going to pretend. Yeah, we had some audio issues quite a bit in the first round, so we're actually just going to do this again. Um, it, only better. Is, is it, it possible to do it any better? It's not possible to do it any worse. <laughs> it's only possible to do it better. That is a good point. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to uh, hit the same questions, um, I hope. Well, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But we've got a new studio. Uh, back from break. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, working out a few kinks, and uh, yeah, hopefully this will uh, roll somewhat smooth, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's just do it. Okay. Well, we'll go slightly out of order. Um, we'll hit the uh, computer name mismatch. Now, this is an error. Usually you see it, uh, you know, you're deploying software or when you're, when you are, we froze again. <clears throat> Looks like we're frozen. If you guys can hear us, we're having more time. <laughs> <laughs> I think they can hear us, but I can't click on anything. All right. So, uh, they can hear us, they can't see us. So, I can throw a few symbols and signs at you and make you laugh, and no one else will see it, huh? No comment. None. Okay. We should be back now. All right. All right, we're back. Woo. Those are the technical difficulties we're working through today. All right. Uh, let's, let's do that. Okay, so you, you'll get this when you're trying to scan computers sometimes or when you're deploying to computers. You'll get this error. JJ, can you zoom in on that without breaking everything? <laughs> I'm waiting to see JJ flip me off in the studio. I would never do that to you. Yeah, I'm sure you would. <laughs> yeah, it's never, ever happened. All right. It says target name mismatch. Target computer name mismatch. We tried scanning this computer called Wingland. Now, what's one of the biggest culprits of this? It really is DNS. DNS. Thank yep. you very much. DNS, baby. Um, what, uh, to, to nail this down, uh, PDQ Inventory thinks that Wingland has uh, an IP address, a different IP address than he actually has, than the computer mm -hmm. actually has. So the last time we had contacted uh, Wingland, had this IP address. Now, not only does he no longer have it, it belongs to a different computer. Machine, yeah. So, so we will nail that down. Let's, in fact, let's. A um, couple of things you ought to try to verify this one. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you can do a ping and ping the name and see what comes back. Yep. Another thing that's a good one is an NS lookup. Yeah. Let's uh let's do this. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna show them this. I'm gonna, I like to create. I like to uh, uh, create a custom tool just so I can open up a command prompt. But a command prompt that's it's elevated. elevated has admin privileges. So yeah. Let's just do that really quick. That way I can always, I can always, uh, you know, run this. We're just gonna. What we're doing is just creating a custom tool so that we can call this from. PDQ inventory. Since PDQ inventory has to run in elevated mode, uh, any process that it spawns necessarily runs also in elevated mode. Yeah. So we're just going to do a cmd.exe with a slash k. The k will keep up. We'll open up the command prompt and then keep, keep that open. It, yeah. We're going to say a system tool since we're not actually running a, a tool that's going to run on a target computer. We're going to check that. Local. That way yeah. we don't have to have a computer selected to actually run it from the console. Mm -hmm. And now we'll go to uh, tools. You'll see that new tool there, command elevated. There we go. And there we go. So now we have an elevated command prompt. All right. So um, let's just let's uh, ping Wingland. Did you just burp? Oh. <laughs> Did I rancid. gurgle there? <laughs> All right. So uh, what, one thing you can do. Number one, mm -hmm. the DNS he, enable. If you haven't done this, enable DNS scavenging. Yes. This is the, this is the biggest and best thing you can do for your DNS. Enable scavenging. What that does on a schedule, it, uh, your DNS server will go and and, and remove old stale records. Yep. Like old stale. That's stupid. That's uh, redundant. It will reduce stale. Uh, remove stale records. This is the best thing. Feedback from our customers when they have enabled or gotten more aggressive with their DNS scavenging. Um, the, these problems. These problems. These yeah. problems go away quite a bit. But anyway, what you can what we can do. Uh, you might need to restart the, the DNS cache on your system. But first of all, um, because we have you know, intentionally broken Wingland here by give, making sure that DNS has a different address, um, we're just going to go ahead and fix that mm -hmm. really quick. Um, you, we could run a scavenge right now on DNS, but let me just uh, take care of that. All right, so... Um, 
you run DNS, maybe you, maybe you run the scavenging, you clean that up, you fix the record. Mm -hmm. You still may need to take care of the cache on your console mm -hmm. machine. Will you great do that? Way to, go ahead. Uh, IP config flush DNS. Yep. That's a great way of doing it because once again, you know the way Windows works, it doesn't you don't always want to be sending every time you're doing a query to DNS, you don't want to actually hit the server. So you do you do hit that that cache. Since we've tried to hit Wingland, um, we're just making sure to, to sync this up. So Wingland was uh, going to the wrong address. Now let's see if we if we can do an NS lookup. And what is NS lookup? NS lookup is just a network lookup tool. Gonna go try and find the name service mm -hmm. for Wingland. Correct. And so we, we can see that 121, it was showing up as 137. Mm -hmm. So we're, now we're going to go ahead and just rescan that. Yeah, basically, did you just kick the heartbeat off again on that? Or no, did I did. I'm sorry. Scan? Thank you. I hit F6. Okay. Good call. Uh, I hit F6. Obviously, you could select that and come up to scan and say, you know, scan from whatever profile you want. Or if you hit F6 button, that kicks off your default scan profile. Mm -hmm. There we go. Right. And now Wingland was uh, just scanned and, and looks good. So uh, DNS scavenging, one of the best things you can do. This will, this will remove so many of these problems. Yeah. And then sometimes you might have to go in there and actually do some massaging. Where you really have to massage is if you don't use DHCP or DNS and you use like host Those files. files. Yeah. You, know, you have to make sure you stay on top of that. Or if you um, uh, use DNS but you have static entries, you know, just make sure you stay on top of your static uh, A records. Yeah. All right? Now, um, if do we have any questions, if we have any, by the way, if you have any questions, by all means, pop them up. Um, otherwise, we're going to jump into interactive deployments. Now, oh, it looks like. Oh, here we go. Yeah, interactive deployments. Okay. So from Richard C., uh, our interactive deployments, PDQ deploy packages that end users can request and or initiate and or schedule on their own. I remember one of your webcasts mentioned this was a planned for a future release. I am hoping this is finally happening. Sorry to burst your bubble. Sorry to be the bearer of bad tidings, Richard. No, it is not. That feature, uh, should, should it ever come, we have talked about it, that would come most likely with an, an agent. optional agent yeah. that we would provide uh, for PDQ inventory, PDQ deploy, but it, it, it hasn't happened yet, yeah. and we're still discussing that. And once again, if we, if, if we ever do an agent, it would be optional. Um, what interactive actually means, yes. well, let's just take them through what interactive actually means here. Yeah, so we're not saying uh, that the user can request. There are times when you need to use, it's rare, when you need to use interactive deployments. Uh, what this means is there's going to be some process that the installation either needs to have the end user, the person sitting at the target computer, uh, interact with it, or they don't necessarily need to interact, but a process needs access to a desktop. Mm -hmm. um, remember, we run this uh, deployments run silently from a service that's not interactive, so that service doesn't have access to a mm -hmm. desktop. Yep. Um, the vast majority of your deployments are going to be this way. They, they, you want them to run as the deploy user. But we'll show you some examples here. In fact, let's go to. Uh, I want to go to a Windows. I want to go to a Windows Seven machine here. That's um, let's go to Putty. We will show you an example of an interactive. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's do uh, what, PDF Creator. Let's see PDF Creator has a good right. So what we're going to do with PDF Creator, normally that's going to run silent. The end user is not going to see anything. We're going to go change that to run interactive. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm going to delete. I'm going to uh, download that again from uh, from the web there from our package library. Okay. okay. So we're going to come out to PDF Creator. And we just we just chose this one kind of at random, just yeah. so you know. I mean, we'll, 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 remind me, we need to also show them how to do this with an MSI. Okay. Okay. So we're going to import this. Now, PDF Creator does not require what we're going to what, what we're going to do. It, here. It'll run completely silent, and mm -hmm. it does not need interactive whatever yeah. for the day. You know, yeah. So. But we will show. We're going to show you a couple of examples. So, um, PDF Creator is. Uh, you know, they, they have some fairly standard command lines that a lot of other applications have mm -hmm. as far as uh, running silently. I will show you that right now. So here's PDF Creator. I'm going to open up this package. Notice it's step two has the install PDF Creator. This mm -hmm. is the install step. 
and uh, we're running an EXE, it's not an MSI. And you can see the parameters right there, the force install, the very silent. Now, uh, this is specific for PDF creator, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I'm gonna go ahead. On these that have the slash very silent, they also support silent. Silent, now what is the difference between silent and very silent, Lex? Well, very silent's not gonna display anything at all. Silent may display stuff to a logged on user possibly, but not going to ask them any questions. It'll just they'll be able to. It's see like a status bar. Yeah, yeah. See so, something's going on. So silent is is intended for by, by these in, this installer that PDF Creator was made with to let the user see what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, but not necessarily ask any questions. So we've made that silent. They still won't see anything because we haven't changed the run as. Yeah. By default, we have our run as set to deploy, deploy user. Mm -hmm, deploy user. You change. You can change the run as at, at each step if you want. There's your run as and the options. We're going to change that from the default deploy user and say deploy user interactive. This means it's going to still have the administrative credentials of the deploy mm -hmm. user, but it's going to actually interact with the desktop so that if there's anything to display, you'll see it. It will get displayed. Yeah. So let's check it out. Now notice we only changed that on step two, which is the install step. Step one still says run as deploy user. So they're not going to see anything from step one, but they should see something with step two, especially since we changed that to uh, Silent. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it was putty, right? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll deploy that to putty and then watch that take place. Yep, let's do it. We had a, a training session about a, I don't know, a year and a half ago here. A uh, company was, you know, taking the, the uh, two day class. Uh, one of them was saying, we've got a, an in house application, mm -hmm. it needs to go to 7,000 computers, uh, like 2,000 stores around, around uh, the country. Um, and there was an in-house application that was built to run silently. So they, they didn't even have to supply parameters, mm -hmm. he said. It's, it runs silently. Yet when we run with PDQ Deploy, it doesn't run. It just hangs. Um, I said, well, even though it runs silently, it sounds like they're probably, this installation still probably expects a desktop. So we simply, oh, here's, here's an example. Now we're running step two. You can see on this target computer, they see what's going on. No questions are proffered. They just saw the status. That mm -hmm. was an example of an interactive. Anyway, for this other this other guy, um, this customer said, let's change that install step to run as deploy user interactive. Even though it didn't show anything, it, the way it was built, it still expected that. Just you will run into that every now and then. So deploy user interactive. Um, and there's another one that we'll show you. Uh, that kind of requires, um, you know, just use it as needed. Yeah. But don't make this be your default, please. Use it when it's needed. Uh, so let's look at another option for interactive deployment. It's, um, We've hmm. got it. It's Dropbox. Dropbox, yes. Okay. So I'm going to open up the Dropbox package here. Yeah. Now. In interestingly enough, interestingly enough, boy, I can't even speak today. Dropbox used to have to be installed on a user by user basis, and they now have kind of stepped into the enterprise, and we can install it on a machine basis, but it still needs to be logged on and set up as a, as a user. user. Mm -hmm. so, so we're actually going to install it using the deploy user, mm -hmm. quiet, there's no interactive there. But and this is important. If you deploy, uh, if you upgrade Dropbox to a target computer, and so I, I deployed a Lexus computer, uh, it gets installed as the deploy user, which is, if I have it set up as Shane. Mm -hmm. Now, Lex doesn't know what's going on. He All he knows is he's working on his whatever he's working on. I'm assuming my Dropbox is syncing. Yep. Um, but in the Dropbox background. gets upgraded. When it upgrades, it actually stops that mm -hmm. sync process, and it won't start it back up until you log mm -hmm. back on. So we actually made, made this package to start Dropbox as the logged on user. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Once again, we install it, regular. I'm going to go to Options. Mm -hmm. It's the Deploy User. But you'll see a couple of extra steps here, command steps. Start Dropbox if user's logged on on the 32-bit and then on a 64-bit computer. Okay. It's simply some command. It's, a, yep. it's effectively a batch file mm -hmm. that we run. We just say, hey, if this Dropbox exists in this path, start it, start it up. But we're going to run this as the logged, as on, the logged user. on user. So remember, there's two interactive uh, run as. There's the deploy user interactive, and then there's logged on user. Logged on user, obviously, if you run a process that says a logged on user, and that process requires administrative rights, and that logged on user doesn't have it, you're SOL. You no know, problems, yep. Yeah. Um, but in this case, we just need to start Dropbox. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we make sure to do that only if the user's logged on? 
Um, we do that in the conditions. That's right. In the conditions, there's a logged on state. Now, a lot of you have probably used conditions where you've said only run this on 64 or 32-bit or only on Windows 7, mm -hmm. et cetera. There's another lesser used uh, condition called logged on state. And here we're saying the default is to always run. But here we're saying only run this step if a user is logged on. So if there's no user logged on, step two and step three will not run. And if they do run, because the user's logged on, it's gonna run as logged on user. Yep. What does that mean if no Dropbox has been installed? That means that after it's installed and it d didn't upgrade, so they've never had it configured, they're gonna see a Dropbox window mm -hmm. pop up saying time to log into Dropbox. If however, they've, it's just upgraded, they won't see a thing except for in their sys tray, you'll see the Dropbox blank. icon come back on and start syncing up. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, what, that's what the goal really should be. You don't want your users to, as much as possible to know that anything has taken place. See, now I'm going to disagree with you there. That's you need to remind them that you are in control of every bit of their life at yeah. work. You just bark all day. Pretty much. All right, so let's go ahead and deploy this to <laughs> Wing One. Uh, no, we do it to Putty. Oh, putty Putty's thinking. running out. In fact, we can also do this. Let's do this to a machine that no one is logged on to. I don't think anybody's logged on to Ralph right now. Yeah, current nope, user's not. Nope, okay, nope. so we're gonna also do this to Ralph just so they can see how this works. And we'll deploy. So once again, step one, gonna be a, your deploy user quiet all that stuff. It's step two and three only if someone's logged yeah. on. And Putty is logged on right here. So at some point, now Putty doesn't have a uh, Dropbox as far as I know. So, Installed, yeah. Mm -hmm, or configured. So at some point, you're gonna see a, you'll, you'd see a Dropbox icon in the sys tray, and then they'll see, he'll, you, if the user's never had it installed, they might get a little surprised when Pops up is. for a login. Mm -hmm. Once again, full contact IT people. Show them you're the boss. And don't if you don't know, obviously you can go look at our deployments. We can see what step the deployment's running. Mm -hmm. And then Ralph should skip over steps two and three if, if, unless someone's logged on in the last little bit. If you have any questions, by all means. Send them in. Down. If running is interactive so it has access to a desktop, Take it back there. And by the way, you can see we've, uh, Putty is, Putty just ran. We should see any moment now, we should see Dropbox. There's the Dropbox icon in the sys tray starting, starting up. Starting up. And, and there it is. If we see that uh, processes. Dropbox, Dropbox is running as the dude that's the user that's logged on. Yep. All right. Perfect. So anyway, um, but if we go look at, Looks like it's still running. Maybe Ralph is having problems. Ralph won't actually run step two or three because yeah. no one's logged on. Anyway, so to answer your question, um, will it still run? Uh, if you have the condition for the logged on state set to always run, and then you hit you know, run as logged on user, um, it's, it's uh, probably going to run as the local system. Yeah, system. The local system is a, a built-in account with uh, Windows. Um, if nobody else is logged on, that's going to be the session that it most likely tries to run as. So you probably won't get what you're looking for. Yeah. That's why if you need something to run as logged on user, uh, then you know make sure to change your condition logged on state to only run if a user is logged on. And then of course there's also the opposite, you know, only run if no user yeah. is logged on. But that's when you would be doing something else, like maybe you, you know, only run this if. You know, we've also gotten you know, received questions about, you know, setting up things in your uh, registry under H key uh, current user. Mm -hmm. And that obviously you have to do as logged on user. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I'm just going to, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to go, people get this all the time. We get this quite a bit. I'm going to open up the registry here. I'm mm -hmm. going to go to H key current user. Now I'm currently logged on as Quintana on this machine. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to create a new key test and inside of test I'll just do a new string value Lex is a monstrous tool true well I'm, I'm about I'm about to make a comment about that I'm just gonna let that one fly my friend <laughs> <sighs> what a tool all right so now we've got this so people are gonna say I, I've got a 
apply. <laughs> I've got I've got to um, you know deploy this registry file. Mm -hmm. I'm going to export this just to the desktop here. And we'll call this Lex Tool. <laughs> what an original name! But it makes a point. Mm -hmm. And then you can see there's that reg file. So I'm going to create a new. I'm going to create a new. Yeah, it looks like Ralph is having a problem. Let's just abort that and move it on. I'm going to create a new package. All right, and we'll call this registry stuffs. And uh, step one, now we're going to use an install step. Mm -hmm. And here I'm just going to point to that registry file. And I'm glad you brought this up, Lux, because this, is, this does get a lot of people. Mm -hmm. This surprises a lot of people. So we're going to run this reg file. Now, obviously, since it's an install step and we're pointing to a reg file as the install file, if you look at the command line down here, zoom in on that, JJ. It'll run a reg edit for you because, you know, we understand our, what an reg file is. Mm -hmm. Reg edit slash s, mm -hmm. make it silent. We're going to import this. But remember, this was imported from current user, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just a regular schmo. I'm deploying this as the deploy user, which is Quintana. I'm going to deploy this over to uh, Putty. Putty. Bing, bing, bing. So we have, we'll have people say, hey, this, I deployed this, and guess what? It says it ran successfully. Mm -hmm. But then I go and I look in Current user the registry, registry, and it's not there. What's going on? You guys said it was successful. Copying. Good Lord, this is slow. It's a, it's a big file. <laughs> <laughs> Has to do with me being a tool. It's going to go really slow mm. across this network. Don't mess. With, spite. Don't mess with it's a sysadmin. Spite. I love it. <laughs> so then, so the, the sysadmin will come in, you know, look at that and expect to see. Under current user. Under current user, they'll expect to see test or whatever, whatever it was. Yep. And it's not there. Now, what we tell them, well, tell you what, just try this. Log out. Log back in. Log back in employee as user. the deploy user and I'll bet you'll find it there. So let's go back into uh, to the Pudster. But this time I'm going to log in as, as Quintana, which is the deploy, which was the deploy user, yeah, right? The one we've got set up here to do our deployments, yeah. <laughs> See, you got a case of the uh, Lex mm -hmm. fingers today. So now I'm logging in as <coughs> just interactively. And this is we're doing this to prove a point, because there's a way for you to get, you know, to do what you want to do here. But this is what happens with most people, and so we end up getting a ton of sport tickets mm -hmm. on this one. It and it work. just comes down to always remember, you know, A, who your deploy user is, and B, the context of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you're doing registry uh, stuff in the H key current user, not H key local machine, that's user specific. Mm -hmm. Same with app data. If you're trying to copy things to the, to the uh, app data variable, that's the application directory for each user. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Let's close that. I'm going to open up the registry. And we should see under H key current user test. test, right? Once again, it ran, it said it did exactly what it was, what you, what you told it to do and mm -hmm. what we told it to do. It's, it, it put this in the H key current user. Oh, who's the user? The deploy user. Mm -hmm. So let's delete so that. To fix that, log back out. And we'll log in as the dude again. Mm -hmm. Now to fix that, we're gonna go change the run as. Yep. All right, so now let's come over here in the registry stuffs. Go to conditions and say logged on user or options, pardon me. Mm -hmm. And then go to conditions and say only run if a user is logged on. And now we'll redeploy it. So if Putty's not logged on, this step's not going to run. And actually, since it's the only step and no steps were run because no one was logged on, you would see that an error come back saying no, no, no conditions, mm -hmm. uh, no steps were run due to conditions. But we do know someone's logged on, so it's going to run. Successful. We come over here to the registry. Current user. And test. there's a test. Okay. So now, P 
people, if you, if you have stuff that needs to run under a user's context consistently, like say, oh, you know, when the user... Every time they log in. Yeah. Uh, GPO, baby. Yeah. It's, Just use a GPO. You know, that's what it's there for. Use a mm -hmm. user-level GPO. Uh, even use an old-school login script if you need to. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. you know, your Active Directory looks for those events, says, oh, you know, uh, We're Lex, logging Lex in. is logging yeah. in. Let's run these scripts. Uh, that's where I, I, I would yield to that. But, mm -hmm. you know, on these one, one hitters every now and then, you might need to throw something out. Yeah. I was mentioning app data. So, mm -hmm. Lex, you, you'd called out, and thank you so much for doing that. Um, you know, registry, especially H key current user. I'm going to go to the app data uh, directory. directory. Now I'm doing this on the console the console machine. Notice uh, it goes to uh, the users Jesus Quintana for those big Lebowski fans out yeah. there. Rock on. Um, so it goes to Quintana. This is relative mm -hmm. to Quintana. So if you're saying copy files to app data as part of your package, um, it's going to use the user, whatever user, pro whatever process or user runs that process, it's going to copy to that user's mm -hmm. app data. So if I look at, I'm on Putty and I'm logged on as the dude. App data will abide mm -hmm. and show Goes you. Goes to the dude, Lebowski. which is Jeff Lebowski. So, so uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Once again, if you're copying things to app data, run as logged, logged on, on user, user, set your condition to only run if a user's logged on. There are times, perhaps, uh, where you want to just initiate an installation, but the user really needs to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. Those really should be rare. But in those cases, what you would do is uh, most likely run as um, deploy user interactive because that way that, that process has administrative rights. Mm -hmm. um, but you would not supply any, any, any uh, parameters. Yeah. Um, and then they would just literally be you know, presented with, I need to answer the questions. So I want to cover a few more things. Um, we talked about it on like PDF Creator, we changed the uh, parameter, mm -hmm. the silent parameter from very silent to silent. Remember, parameters change all over the place. Oh, yeah. um, uh, in this case, this happens to be one that, that uh, worked with what we wanted to do. If you're using an MSI file, uh, let me see if I can find Find a good one here. Uh, Chrome always runs silently anyway. Seven zip. No, we'll do we'll do Java. Java is a good one. Seven zip no longer does MSI. Really? Yeah, they changed that. That must be fairly recent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, they had 920, which was their their stable version f since 2011, to September of 11, I believe. Wow. And uh, they finally came out with version 15. But, the, you know, the, uh, the the fellow that maintains 7-Zip just said it was a lot of work to, to maintain an EXE and an MSI. So I'm just going to EXE. Two one, yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we're, we're downloading this. What I'm going to show you, if you're going to do something with, um, oh, you know what? Uh, I think we st yeah we stopped doing MSI on, on the regular I was gonna say. Uh, we, we only do MSI on the uh, alternate. Boy, I'm really sucking today. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll do we'll do seven zip because this is the nine two zero. This is the MSI. So notice, uh, open this up. You see the MSI file now. Um, if you want people to see the MSI, they, we want them to see the status. What you're going to need to do two things. Number one, you know maybe uh, run as deploy user interactive. Mm -hmm. But remember, we're still telling the MSI to run quietly. So this step would have access to the desktop. But if you look down in your MSI options, you see quiet is yes. There is a way to change this. If you really need to have them see the MSI, click custom. And when you see the QN there, zoom in there, JJ. Right and then behind move, me. move Lexus. There we go. Even a little <coughs> bit more, buddy, if you can. If you can't, that's cool. You'll see a slash QN. That slash Q uh, is the quiet and N means no UI. We're gonna change that to QB, all right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna show you, remember, here's what happens if you run, if you run an MSI exec with a slash question mark, you're gonna be presented with this usage window and you can see to, you know, slash Q right there is quiet, no UI with the N, and B is the basic UI. Mm -hmm. That's the same as the silent in the PDF creator. Mm -hmm. So we had the hit custom, change the QN to QB, and change the, uh, this to run as deploy user interactive. So if we, 
And then, if, and then assuming there is something to actually show, some MSIs don't even show anything. Yeah, you know, that's like, true. Like the Chrome one. Chrome is expected to run silently, won't, won't show a thing. But let's, let's try this out. Let's go to Putty. Before we do that, let's hurry and see if Putty needs to remove this. For all I know, Putty already has a later version of 7-zip. Uh, nope. We're going to uninstall it anyway. Done. All right. Score. Yep. So let's go ahead and just close that up, run this, deploy now. And we'll see if it shows anything here. Go back to what we do best mm -hmm. drinking a lot. <laughs> There are times that we've we've noticed a couple of vendors that um, they they'll build their MSI. See, there you go. You saw that? Did you see that status yeah, bar real quick? That blinked really mm -hmm. quick there, but yeah. Yeah, they'll actually build their installation with a slash QB. Okay, here's a good one. Autodesk. A lot of people say I'm trying to install AutoCAD from Autodesk, and there's a lot of steps in those in those packages. When you actually install Autodesk, you need to run that as Deploy User Interactive because they built that installation to expect a desktop. Mm. So it's still silent, it's just it needs access to that. And that's a big gotcha for a lot of people going, this keeps on hanging on this one part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, run that as deploy user interactive. It's a good troubleshooting technique. So you can see what happens here. We saw the MSI get installed quickly. It would, it would have shown successful. Sure enough, there it is. And if we uh, come back over here to the control panel and look in the um, at Ember Programs, you'll see 7-Zip is installed. So. There we go. Should I clap? Good job, Shane. Excellent. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I called you a tool. You're not supposed to be nice to me. Oh, don't do, worry. Do, After. Do we After have any, when we're not on camera. Ow. Do we have any more questions? No, I don't want to wrap it up. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> Throw a question up. We there. already did that one. Uh, did we? No, we didn't. I can't remember. Yeah, 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 Aaron. So the answer is the answer is Aaron. If nobody's logged on and you haven't set your conditions to only run if someone's logged on, um, and it tries to run like as logged on user, it's going to run as the most likely system. local system. Local system. Yeah. Um, and if you say that, now, this could be a problem. We have seen a few times where this is a problem because um, there's no if you run as deploy user interactive, and there's no desktop. Yes, that could that that could pop a problem up. And a lot of times it's okay. The installer oftentimes goes, eh, okay, move along. So uh, it just kind of depends. Be careful about it. Please do not, remember, folks, I cannot stress this enough. Um, there's several places to change your run as. Number one, set your default in preferences under your credentials. Mm -hmm. Run packages as. We highly, highly recommend you keep this at deploy user. Yes. We have seen some people, uh, customers change this to like local system. That can cause problems. Yes, it will. Really, you want to change the run mm -hmm. as as needed. So you can you set your default here. Step level, yeah. Set your default here. You can also change it at the package level. Mm -hmm. At this top node, package properties, you could say run as. So right, it sees the program default as deploy user. You could change that to local system. All right, and then that supersedes for this mm -hmm. package, whatever you have set in preferences. And then if you come down here to these steps, if they're set to use the default, it's going to be changed to local system. Mm -hmm. The step has the highest precedence. You can say, no, run this one as deploy user, and it will supersede whatever you have set here. Yeah. Um, and be then you can change this. You can also change this at deployment time. Yes. But the step still supersedes the deployment. Mm -hmm. Just remember, guys. Stick with the default, you know, it's, Please. it's save yourself a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, we won't laugh at you too hard, I guess, if you do make that mistake. Okay, well, I'm wrong. We will. We'll laugh at you for doing that. There are times when you need to change it. Uh, a, a common one for a local system is Lotus Notes. A lot of mm, times, yeah. Lotus Notes, uh, to install that, you actually have to say run as local system, not just deploy user local system. So once again, do this as needed, folks. Don't make this your default. You're just going to run into problems if you, if you, if you do that. All right, well, uh, sorry again, once again, take two on this, but rock on. I hope this uh, helped. If you guys have any suggestions, uh, ask Annie. Send yeah, a, there we go. Yeah. Send, she'll tell, uh, make, hey, JJ, make sure Annie just mentions where to send questions and suggestions for webcasts. Yes, she will.
All right. I'm Shane. That's Lex. Talk See you on later. Everyone, thanks for joining us again. Um, if you have any questions, you can submit them at support.adminarsenal.com. You can also make suggestions for future webcasts. Um, and we'll see you guys next Thursday.